So, hey, welcome to uh, Dying to Listen podcast. I have Kateri here. Uh, so if you want to introduce yourself, uh, who you are, what you call yourself, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, I'm Kateri, and I am This Is How I Die, a la Facebook and Instagram. How did you come up with that name? It was very random. Um, when I first started dying, I just... I only opened the Instagram. I've never been an Instagram person. I only did that just so I could have a nice clean gallery of my discs. I made that up. I made that disc, even though I'm not a bed dyer at all, just to have something of a logo. And I've just been using that for a couple of years. The name was available. I was like, oh, that's kind of clever. This is how I die. And I'm literally one of these people where I'm, this is how I die. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Yes! <laughs> okay, it's a very punny, punny name. Well, I'm assuming you play disc golf, right? Yes. Yes, okay. We've played around, so I shouldn't have yes. asked that question. <laughs> uh, how long have you been playing disc golf, and what got you into disc golf? I think it was like 17 or 18 when I first started. Uh, so that's really long time ago. A very long time, I know. I've been playing, well, thanks for alluding to my <laughs> age, sir, yes, um... I was dating a guy when I was like a teenager, at the end of high school, early college kind of thing, that all of his friends just went out and I decided to try it. And for a good 15 years, I was a bring one disc with me kind of thing. And then meeting more people, more friends, dating different guys that were disc golfers, started doing different things. And then, yeah, now it's just an almost daily thing because I live in Madison. We have so many courses and everything, but technically, yes, I've been playing for like almost 20 years and I only have one ace. One. Yeah. One. I've, I've known, I know somebody that's been playing for 10 years and he has not gotten an ace. I think it, it's like, come on. Yeah. New for my next one. Yes. You grew up in Waukesha, right? Yeah. You played in my backyard where I grew up. So I grew up around here. My first course I ever played at was Valley View. Um, and Sussex, the course that I just got done playing at this morning. Um, those are the main two ones that I played at growing up and then kind of just branched out. We would start traveling around. I mean, I'm in Madison now, so they pull the pins during winter. Mm. So I tend to come back to this area. I mean, I'm not that far away or anything to come play in like the winter or late fall after they've pulled the pins in Madison. So does every course in Madison pull the pins that you know of? There is, um... There's a couple of smaller ones, like a nine hole that keeps theirs in, and then um, the Yahara uh, golf course during the winter that gets changed into a disc golf course. So there are some winter spots out there, but you get, I get sick of playing the same course over and over because I'm used to having like choices everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know? it is crazy how many choices we have in this area. Yeah. So. Uh, I was just talking earlier about how um, I have a list of you know all the courses I've played, and I've played at 42 courses in Wisconsin. I have a list as well, and there's still courses that I haven't played, even in southeast Wisconsin. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, 414 Custom Joe was just talking about all kinds of places more in the Milwaukee earlier when we played earlier, and there's a bunch that I, yeah, never heard of, never been to. What has been your favorite course that you've played and what course would you like to play like ever of all time anywhere yes sandy point that's okay. i mean th there's something very like magical about that place and the, mm. the the people that run it are awesome and it's just you know when you go to those big mecca type places like high ridge hills mm -hmm. uh sandy point uh rolling ridge where, you know, it's just groups of disc golfers getting together and partying all weekend, camping out, and then, you know, you you, you throw around, you come back, you, you get, you know, drinks, food, whatever, you go back, you throw around, and it's just like a whole weekend full of that kind of stuff. But Sandy Point just has, there's a special vibe to that place. It's very special. Hmm. It's I, worth the drive. I haven't played there yet, but I, a lot of people have been recommending it. It's very cool. It's a very cool spot. You know, it's up in, uh, well, near Minocqua, so kind of northern Wisconsin. And Highbridge Hills is even more of that, that it's near the, um, what, Shawamagon Nicolay Forest, that it's just got big, huge old trees and mm -hmm. just gorgeous courses, which I really like in a, a disc golf course. Is I don't like these big open fields and stuff. I like I like all the trees and being, like, in the woods. Yeah. No, I agree. And I feel like we do have a good variety here as yeah. well. 
of either forest and or open stuff. Yeah. But awesome. Yeah. How did you get into disc dyeing? Boredom, COVID, just like, gosh, what, 80% of the disc dyers <laughs> out there? Yeah. Um, yeah, being stuck at home, uh, my ex-boyfriend was driving me crazy. I started <laughs> buying up a bunch of uh, paint by numbers and stuff, and I've done a bunch of those, and I really like some of them. I, I framed them, and they're hung around my apartment now. Some of them turned out really nice, but I just got kind of sick of that, and a friend of mine who some people might recognize is I don't know what his name is on there, but um, he used to post a lot of stuff on DGCR. Very old school, not on Facebook, not on Instagram, not on anything, but he had done a bunch of really cool dyes. He did a really awesome dye for me. So I started bugging him, you know, Michael, how do I, how do I dye a disc? And mm. he's a very like, I don't know, you just do it. <laughs> so uh, after bugging him kind of over and over again, he kind of gave me little hints and clues. And I honestly, like, the internet kind of pisses me off. And I, I didn't even bother, like, going on YouTube and looking for tutorials or anything. I was just like, I'm going to figure this shit out. And I'm going to bug Michael until he tells me. And then just kind of went from there. Fascinating. <laughs> well, you know, I'm still trying to bug you on your trade secrets. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, what was the first disc that you've actually dyed? Uh, it was hand painted. It was way before I had a machine or anything. I did like a Starry Night one, mm. and there was like one with a bee with some flowers, and there was a third one that I just hand painted with some of the dyes that he had given me. And I can't remember which was the first first one I did, but literally I I, I aimed a little high. Mm -hmm trying to do Starry Night, but um, then I opened an Etsy shop and that was one of the first ones that I sold. Like someone has that out there somewhere, but it, I, I kind of wish I still had it because it was pretty cool for being like a hand painted Starry Night thing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Did you have any fails or are there any fail stories that stuck with you? Because I'm assuming you've had some, we've all had some. Oh yeah. Lots. I think I've done almost 300 dies Jeez. it would it would take me a minute to really <sighs> figure it out because there's some that like you know we're just some like weird inside joke thing that i didn't like keep amazing pictures of it or something but kind of going through my like instagram posts and stuff i think it, and i've collected my photos into a lot of the stuff i use because i think it's it's just kind of nice to have a yeah. big whole thing you know i have like a poster at the store in madison that has a whole bunch of stuff but um there's there's so many different things. I think out of all of that, though, what I was getting at and lost my train of thought was that I think there have been two times that I straight up threw a disc in the garbage. Mm. That I was like, fuck this. I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> and both of the times my ex actually pulled him out of the garbage. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're out discing one day. And I'm like, what the fuck is that doing in your bag? <laughs> I threw that away. It's not that bad. Like, I just, I didn't want to look at it anymore. It wasn't even that great of a disc kind of thing. But um, I tend to sometimes get uh, too dark. And then it, it, I'm starting to treat these more like pieces of art mm -hmm. than discs. And even, you know, some of the ones I've done, I'm just like, oh, that, you know, that's beautiful. But, you know, especially like the champion discs and stuff, they end up so dark after you dye them and then it's really hard to find them to actually throw them but i've had like over my little you know career it's like 50 50 on the people that hang them on a wall or throw mm -hmm. them i feel like you put a lot of work into that and uh it's hard to throw that but i do believe that every disc should be thrown i i agree yes but there's so many people that are just you know especially with like custom ideas kind of stuff you know they, they get it and it's like oh i don't i don't want to lose it it came out so much better than i thought it was going to be blah 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 and i'm like you know yeah i spent a ton of time on it I would, it would be cool if you didn't just throw it and lose in the lake <laughs> immediately but and it's gone do whatever the hell you want with it you know there's mm -hmm. some people that are very you know get kind of uh aggressive about no throw it but it, it, you paid me for something special to you do whatever the hell you want with it yeah. i don't care mm -hmm. i did my part exactly enjoy it mm -hmm. enjoy it however you want to enjoy it so for your first dyes do you remember what dyes you used and what method you've done for people that have seen my um t diddy video i've always done the detergent and that was a thing thanks to michael 
he, and he he hand cuts everything. He does everything a weird way that I haven't heard of anybody else. I have a good sample of one. It took him. I show it to you and then. Ooh. Uh, yeah, exactly. If you can even see it on the video, I've had this on a wall for a good eight years, but it took him like two months to do. And he had, you know, he tried shaving cream stuff, which I've never done before. And there was some specific thing he was trying to do that he found on. DGCR probably one of those forums because he was big there mm -hmm. that they use detergent So then he just started using like an eyedropper and doing the detergent. So then that's I that's just how I learned again I didn't know people were painting with lotion and stuff and I've just stuck with it because I kind of like it. It's like a Watercolor painting to me, hmm. but he gave me some eye dye poly. He didn't there wasn't a ton of uh, pro chemical and dye colors out at the time but he had a couple of like random pylum colors that uh, some Milwaukee DGCR people, maybe from back in the day, will remember. There was this pylum bright green that someone bought like a pound of, and they just split it up between a ton of people. So before Pro Chemical and Dye had the PCAD, I'm shortening that, that's too much. Mm -hmm. um, before they had the neon key lime, that was the best bright green out there. Mm. And you can't even order dye from them anymore yada yada and he actually just moved and gave me all of his leftover dyes and so i have a couple of like a, a, a fluorescent yellow that i don't know if anybody else has i think he doesn't even remember what brand it was it might be pylum also and then some uh pylum aqua hmm. I, which yeah so i think it was just another industrial dye manufacturer from back in the day pretty much what pcad is yeah, I feel like there's not a whole lot, I won't say choices, but it's pretty yeah. narrow. It's either Pro Chem or... I dye poly. Yeah. I like a lot of I dye poly colors still. Like, I know Pro Chemical and Dye, you know, they have, you know, reds. There's how many yeah. different reds they have and yada yada. But, like, I dye red is just, it's a great red. And it's very, very potent. Very, extremely potent. And I think um, I use uh, their crimson for any of like the blood splatters mm -hmm. that I've yeah. done. That's a nice red. And uh, the blue I really like because it, if you don't mix it up real well, it does this kind of like purple blue morphing kind of thing that comes mm -hmm. out really cool on a lot of stuff. So there's, there's some I dye poly I still use, but a lot of the dyes now are Pro chemical and dye. Well, it, I've ordered some, and then freaking Keith Lempa keeps sending me all these sample kits when I only want one color. So now I'm like loaded up with that. Like, thanks for pushing that on me. I'll use them. <laughs> so you have these I'll call rare dyes. What are you gonna do when you run out of those? Oh, I don't. I don't care about them that much. Oh, They're easily replaceable. All right, then. That's what I was saying. How uh, the neon lemon zest and the yeah. neon key lime. Uh, these are the ones I'm talking about with the Pylon brand. They're a little bit, they're, they're extremely potent, actually. Like the fluorescent yellow is extremely potent, hmm. but it's easily replaced with neon lemon zest to get the same kind of color. The yeah. glow is just a lot better, or the UV reaction, it's not glowing, Yeah, is a lot stronger with the fluorescent yellow. What methods have you tried for dyeing? I guess. I've kind of only done, I mean, I've done some bed stuff, I guess, but it's literally like my beds are a pan of lotion and dribbling some of the detergent mixes around and then swirling it around with, you know, a toothpick. Hmm. And I just didn't like doing it. It's so unpredictable. I, I'm not a control freak, <laughs> but I like to know what's happening to these discs when I'm spending so many hours and hours and hours on them. I don't like the unpredictability of being like, oh shit, what's it gonna look like <laughs> when I'm pulling it out of the bed? I don't like that feeling. I don't like it at all. No, I, I'm the same way. I like to know what I'm going to get. Yeah. So if someone saw your discs, what method or style would you say that you have? I, I'm a stencil dyer. Yeah. That's, yeah. How, how, I don't know. How did you get into stencils? Probably Michael again. Yeah. He just, uh, like, I showed that one, and he's done a bunch of other, like, locally people in Madison and stuff. There's probably a ton of people that have his dyes. He's kind of an oddball dude. Like, I love him, but he's a weirdo. He never took money for anything, and I'm like, are you insane? <laughs> you spent, like, a month on that, and you're not going to, like, ask for any money for your time? Like, not that I'm like, ooh, ooh, money, money, but yeah. I'm like, 
for some of the stuff he did, like even the one that he did for me, like that's that's insane to spend months and months hand cutting that. That's insane. Yeah. I could never imagine doing that. I even with a machine that's a lot of time and effort. Yeah, and when I first started out, um, you know, I had a lot of pop culture things that I like that I know other people like that it started with a lot of like movie characters and stuff that I knew I could just find it mm-hmm. and then do it and I I'm just yeah, I like stencils. So what do you use to cut out your stencils? I have a Cricut Explore Air 2. Gotcha. And what setting do you use? Washi tape. And how did you find that out? Uh, well, I feel like I'm one of the first people that knew about this, but I don't know. Some people have said Tiffany Shaw said it like before me, which I'm not challenging it or anything. <laughs> but I did talk about it in my T Diddy video and I had been getting like really frustrated. And again, that dreaded X. Mm-hmm. was obsessively looking at YouTube videos to try and help me out because I was refusing to watch any YouTube yeah. videos. <laughs> and he try, told me to try it, and then I was like, oh, well, shit, this kind of works. What vinyl do you use? Oracle 651? Yes, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I get the big, huge packs on Amazon that's like the 50 sheets, and I like the sheets, not the rolls, because yeah. it sticks to the you know mat a lot better. The, the rolls are frustrating because they're always curling, and you're just hard to manhandle always crinkling and all kinds of yeah even if you trim them down which i ended up doing with the roll i had at work with one of those big cutters i put them under like a bunch of heavy books and they never flattened out and they had the crinkles where the curl was Mm -hmm. so yeah no unless you you use like a u.s cutter or something that needs to be on a roll which i have used because my boss has one at work It cuts it so fine and so well that it's hard to see where the cuts are when you actually need to weed it. Yeah. Huh. I was honestly looking at getting a U.S. cutter, one for larger format stuff for other stuff, but... Yeah. It does pretty nice fine detail stuff. It really does. Anything I know, I know for a fact that my Cricut's not going to work. I'm like, all right, well, let me just cut this out at work. I mean, if you were to get another vinyl cutter for your personal use and I guess money wasn't an object, what would you get? Oh, just to piss Keith off, another cricket. <laughs> Everybody with this cameo silhouette, so much better. The software, yada, yada, yada. I do everything in um, Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah. So I don't care about the software, really. I do everything in the programs that I know because I have those programs available to me. I'm not worried about the software at all. Yeah. Can, can it cut the thing? Oh, cool. Yes, I'll take it. I'm the same way. So what do you actually do for a living? I'm a graphic designer at a marketing company. So, yeah. Yeah, that... uh, That helps. (laughs) That does help uh, to uh, do what you want. Mm -hmm. For your stencils, do... How do you create your stencils as far as the artwork? Do you find an image and go with it? Or do you tweak anything at all? Or do you create anything on your own? Or a mixture of everything? Kind of a mixture of everything. Um, I don't do a lot from scratch. I feel like... I have a weird creative brain that I have to use a lot of that energy at work. Mm. And then when I'm done with work, that part of my brain, like, kind of just wants to shut off. Mm -hmm. And if I just, like, find cool shit and then stockpile all that cool shit, then I just have something ready. Like, like I always loved uh, coloring books when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Fucking loved coloring books. That was my favorite thing. All the Lisa Frank coloring books and whatnot. So if I can find something that has nice, clean, you know, outlines where I'm pretty much just coloring it in, that's perfect. Like, that being said, like, I've done, um, well, I did one recently that was, like, a portrait of a guy from Madison that passed away in July. Mm -hmm. And I've done some pets. Some of those have been by hand. Some of those have been creating a stencil out of an image if it was, like, kind of tough. I do a lot of just surfing around and looking for shit that would look cool on a disc yeah a lot of yeah stock photos um i've gotten a lot of mine uh ones on etsy which a lot of people are like oh just use the free stuff but if someone's selling something really cool that has nice clean lines Mm -hmm. for me to use and i can buy it for two dollars yeah here's your two dollars exactly yeah how do you take say like a photo or something that isn't really optimized for a stencil how do you make it a stencil 
There's a lot of different things. Um, recently, for the one I'm talking about with the portrait mm -hmm. of um, Andrew, uh, I, I just I found a really nice Photoshop tutorial using stuff that I hadn't used before. I had tried, you know, cleaning it up, making black and white, and then trying to do like a re a trace and mm -hmm. Illustrator, and stuff just wasn't really working out. And I now I'm on this like step by step by step tutorial that I found, and it's been working out really nice. What software do you mainly use for your stencils or, and or creating them? Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah. Mm, I hate Adobe, but damn, it's the industry standard. I love Illustrator. That was my favorite, like, even when I was in college. I'm really good at Illustrator and InDesign. Photoshop, I'm just, I'm just not one of those Photoshop graphic designers. Yeah. I know how to do the basics, but I'm not in there creating digital paintings and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so back in the day... Did you ever pirate the software? Because I feel like everybody was. I, I have a conspiracy theory that they purposely allowed that so people would use it. So when they become adults, they would want to buy it. No, because we had uh, I my junior year of high school. I was in photo and we did stuff. They mm. had they had bought the programs and whatever. And then I was in like the R&D class, which is more graphic design based. And then right out of high school, I went to WCTC right up the road for design. So then I had all the programs available to me then. As soon as I got my degree, I got a job at a print shop. So I had all the programs and it's just been kind of continually over the years. Yeah, I've never, I've never stolen any software. Neither have I for the record. <gasps> I think he's lying. <laughs> Aha. Can you explain your current process of how you would dye a disc from, you know, like the stenciling to the coloring that you do and maybe providing any trade secrets if you want? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I Really, though, there's not much to it. There's so many different... It, it all starts with the black, mm -hmm. the outline, creating the stencil, finding the stencil, sizing the stencil, applying the stencil, getting that black on, Sometimes I plan out, you know, what colors I want to do everything or if it's, you know, a logo or, you know, something specific, then whatever. And then planning out the order of the colors of what you're pulling and everything. Mm -hmm. it, I, you know, usually hot dip the black outline and then I just start hand painting all of those areas with paintbrushes, toothpicks, sponges. Sponge is my kind of secret weapon, I feel like. And people are usually like, what do you mean a sponge? You can do so many cool things with a sponge. Yeah. It creates a lot of really cool textures. How do you center your stencil on the disc, even though the one I see over there is slightly off? <sighs> slightly off, but, <laughs> but awesome. Let's yes. stay there. We can, okay. we can change it up in between. Yes. It's gorgeous. Yeah. If slightly off center. I don't really care about that. Well, Just like fine. I don't care about how dirty it gets on the back. Yeah. Math math yeah i don't use any lasers or any fancy shit i oh that stencil is eight inches wide i'll mark a line at four inches and four inches there's the center <laughs> i literally or i'll if it's like a complicated stencil uh I, I find it in illustrator and mark where the center is and then i know mathematically exactly where the center is do you put the vinyl on top of the disc or do you put the disc on top of the vinyl when you apply it to actually put it on on mm -hmm. uh I use a light table or a light board, mm -hmm. so vinyl down, okay. and then, whoops, sorry, you know, play the fun little game of finding the dot and drop it down. Yeah, I guess I that would be easier to do without a laser, but lasers are cooler. I have cats. I, they, they, they've already spilled my dye a couple of times. Like I, I want them to stay the fuck off of my dye table. Not, not, not be more invited onto the table. I guess I with lasers. Never thought of that, but you, math works just fine. Yes, but you have cats, so you have to have a laser. Yeah, it's, okay. it's shaped like a little mouse. Yes. <laughs> it's not going to work for just. Do you uh, weed on the disc or before you put it on the disc? On, on. Yeah. I don't know how people weed it and then put it on, especially something super complicated. It just it gets all flimsy and folded over, and then you wasted so much time. Yeah. Once it's on the disc, it's so much easier. I agree. Uh, one, because if I somehow misalign it or mess it up, I didn't spend all that time weeding it for nothing. Exactly. And two, I find weeding on the disc easier for the fine detail because stuff doesn't get pulled up along with it. 
I think it's easier to see too, especially, yeah. I mean, maybe again, uh, I hope people are using like a light board or a light table kind of thing, but it, it's so much easier to see what you're doing and visualize it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You have the light coming through and then usually what I do is I just take it off the light table and then look at it that way and that just pulling it off and looking at it without the light behind it. I'm like, oh shit, missed the spot. Oh, missed the spot here. Do you have a preference of color vinyl? Like do you use white, black? I use white. Really? Okay. I just I just always have. Yeah. And haven't had an issue with it. I when I've seen people cut stuff out on like black vinyl and stuff and I'm like, I just feel like that would be hard to see. I disagree because I use black and the reason is I my soul is very dark and black. <laughs> But it's the contrast because usually I dye white discs, yeah. so you can actually see what's vinyl, what's not. I've never used a light board uh, weeding on the disc. I guess it never occurred to me because I didn't think there'd be enough light to shine through the disc. To the hardest stuff to see is like uh, disc craft, like ESP plastic kind of stuff. That really opaque, opaque plastic. Mm -hmm. That gets harder to see through, but um, pretty much anything else that's white, and especially if you're doing anything that's kind of like the Lucid Opto lighter colors or a Champion, which yeah. you don't even really need it. But mm -hmm. I, I've gone through several of them, though. They just don't spill your acetone on the damn light table because it's plastic, and it'll just Bells. screw it all up. <laughs> yep. Do you have a favorite type of plastic you like to dye and or disc brand? I don't really like Discraft. It, really? it takes forever. I, I mean, I've done some cool Discraft dyes, but I, I feel like it just takes so long. And I've been doing a lot of stuff on Champion because of the stained glass dyes, and it just, it takes so long. I like like instant gratification <laughs> of doing like just star plastic, you know? Yeah, you are sadistic with doing the Champion stuff of what you do. I know. Wow. But it's so pretty. It is. <laughs> Uh, do you use any heat for your stuff? I know you do the hot dip, which is obviously hot, but for your coloring, do you use any heat and what do you use? Yes. I used to just like use my oven. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> Got a toaster oven and that worked out well. It, mine had a weird kind of setting where if you didn't pull it, you know, back that little 16th of an inch, it turned on the the toaster which is a little too warm and now i've been using a dehydrator because then i can have three discs in there at once mm. i'm not worried about it being too hot and the one i have has um a digital timer and a digital thermometer so i just you know set it to the the, the, the second from lowest it's like 122 degrees or something but yeah if it's something really quick um i do have a heat gun i just don't really like mm. using the heat gun, like it, it, it works, but I, I really like having the dehydrator now. What what got you turned on to the dehydrator? Someone was talking about it on the Dyer's page, and I was like, you know what, that's pretty smart, because yeah. then I can do several if I get the multi-tray kind of one. Mm -hmm. Better temperature control, not as unpredictable, Yeah. and yeah, being able to do more than one, because I started getting frustrated trying to like <laughs> work on multiples at once, because there's so many of them that I do that it's hours and hours and hours and layers and layers and layers that, you know, if I'm stuck inside, if it's shitty outside or something, mm -hmm. while that one's just sitting and heating up for, you know, a color that might take like 20 minutes or something, I want to be doing something else. The dehydrators, they have a fan to circulate the air. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your dye or whatever your mixture is dries out? No. And you, again, it did it more so even in the toaster oven. Yeah. Indeed. It's like a better circulation of heated air without mm. as much um, humidity because yeah. of the dehydrator kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I haven't really had any issues with it. And you use the detergent exclusively, right? Yeah, okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't paint on with anything else. What kind of detergent do you use? All clear or the Tide clear. Um, I know there's some people out there that do the detergent. I feel like a lot of it's because of my stupid T D D video. <laughs> and like, that was just how I learned. That's just yeah. how I did it. Um, but you can't you buy the cheap shit. The cheap shit's too runny mm. and it'll just fall off the disc. Mm -hmm. um, the better brands, like I said, like Tide or All, are a little bit thicker. And I, I like getting the clear stuff because I keep all my stuff in little jars. 
just as a better color representation because yeah. sometimes when I'm working on shit, I got, you know, 20 jars open on my table. Mm -hmm. I can kind of tell which is which better. If you use like the stuff that's blue or green, you kind of lose the color representation. Do you ever wish that the uh, detergent was thicker? Yes. Have you ever thought about using cornstarch <laughs> or something like that? I have tried that and it, it, it turns into a weird chunky mess. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, good that you explained. I've also, I think just from doing so many and just having experience with it, like I'm sure, you know, there's better ways to do it with alcohol for, you know, yada yada or lotion for whatever, because it's so much mm -hmm. thicker and sits on there better. But I, I think I've just, just like the way I throw when I disc off, I just adjust to what's needed. Yeah. So I'm so used to it. And when people are like, mine's too runny, blah, 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 blah. Like, I, I don't know what you're doing wrong. Maybe <laughs> buy the good detergent for one thing, yeah. add more dye, some colors like really thicken up really nice if you just kind of add extra dye. And then as they get to the bottom of the jar, I just add more detergent and mix it up yeah. until it's like faded a little bit. Yeah, I experimented with some detergent. I haven't done a whole lot, but I found it more uh, liquidy, <laughs> liquidy than lotion. Lotion yeah. is pretty thick and can yeah. hold its own, but with the detergent, you gotta be slightly more careful especially like on domier discs when you're on the edge yes you gotta be careful not for it to run yep how long do you typically leave your coloring in the dehy dehydrator or how long do you let this dye sit on the disc to it, it depends on, of the, course it on the color on the dye right. um on average <laughs> it really is okay the <laughs> most is maybe like 30 minutes okay. for like uh some of the neon colors. Um, but then there's some, you know, I do a lot of things where there might be, you know, I want six different shades of blue. So I'll put on, you know, one layer of the darkest one, five minutes, pull off the next pieces of the next lightest blue, mm -hmm. paint all that over again, put it back in for five minutes. So I'm still getting all these different, you know, shades of blue, but it's only technically five minutes at a time. But then by the time it's done, the darkest one it's been on for like a total of you know 20 minutes 30 minutes kind of thing do you have a must-have dye accessory that you could not live without a good weeding tool <laughs> good weed until uh, what do you use to weed I, the the cricket weeding tool the, the little <laughs> hook thing yes. yes it's called the weeding tool yes <laughs> having yeah having a good weeding tool having a good uh i don't know a good reliable squeegee to get all those damn air mm. bubbles out. Yeah. Um, my sponge. I love my sponges. That's a special thing. So it's not just <laughs> any type of sponge. It's a specific type of sponge. Can you elaborate on that? I should have brought one. I think I might have one. Maybe. I was telling people for a while that it was just like a craft sponge. Mm -hmm. Because it looked like sponges my mother had in her craft room growing up kind of thing. And then like... It's not the same. Mm -hmm. Technically, on Amazon, what I have found, they're called tack sponges. They're for, like, working with leather and mm. stuff, for applying oils to leather, I guess, mainly. But it, to me, it still looks like a craft sponge. But yeah. if you get the uh, kind of shitty, cheap, synthetic ones, the holes are too tiny, and you don't... It, it doesn't do the same effect, because instead of absorbing some of the stuff, it just spreads it everywhere and then you can get good stuff with like natural sea sponges but sometimes those holes are too big or you know I, I, the tack sponges tend to have kind of the same size holes around it and they last forever i some of mine yeah they're like black now but i've been using them for like years do you uh like rinse your sponges after you're done using or yeah. you just okay that's one of the other great things about detergent. If I like, you know, <laughs> leave all of my paint brushes and sponges out overnight or for two days, three days, all I gotta do is rinse it underwater and it self soaked itself. Yeah, that mm, ingenious. Oh yeah, that's exactly why I did it. You use the sponges for I would call your signature style. How would you describe that style? It's basically a texture and or you know. Oh, Quit trying to get my fucking secret little thing out of me. I think okay. I think every dyer out there, if you have got something that is very unique, that has got people say like Dave here being like, hey, hey, what's your secret? Hey, hey, what's your secret? 
I think people are allowed to keep a little bit of a secret. Well, that's fine. With my signature texture. Yes. As far as everything else, um, the sponge is also, you know, the wood grain. Uh, and I, I wish I had more samples that I brought kind of thing. I use sponges for all kinds of stuff. Like uh, the tool one, that's a good example. And the one that's up there around the edge. Usually, I just mm -hmm. sponge a little black around the edge and it gives it just kind of a rustic, darker, almost more 3D, even though it's a 3D object kind of thing. Yeah. You can just do a lot of different stuff and especially in another one with this kind of thing, mm -hmm. layering, this is a bunch of different, different greens, different blues to just create some texture on it. Yeah, so for the it's just fidgeting. You're just taking a sponge and just mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. If you don't like the way it's looking on it, you just rinse it off right away. A lot of my discs have, I'm doing that and it, with like black and you only leave it on for like 10, 15 seconds and it adds just, you know, just a little taste of something. So for the audio listeners, basically it just adds some texture <laughs> to it. It's, yes. Or, you know, uh, to mimic the wood grain, so... Uh, I know you're not going to divulge your secret, which is fine, but how how did you discover that? Happy accidents. Yeah. There's so much with everybody's disc dying. Mm -hmm. That's a happy accident. Yes. Happy accident. Nice. <laughs> yes. That's all we'll say. So where's the door? Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, Shit. <laughs> Is there any tips and tricks you would like to give to uh, beginner disc dyers or dyers that have been doing this for a while? I really don't want to repeat the same things that a lot of other people have said, but don't really fuck around with RIT. Just, yeah. if anything, start with the iDye Poly. It's usually available at your craft stores and whatever. You mm -hmm. can get started easily with that. Don't go and start your first disc on a champion type plastic disc you are just going to frustrate yourself try and start with like one of the easy to die ones like again like the star or like gold line kind of thing and there's a lot of resources out there now it's very easy to find information so don't be stubborn like me use those resources mm -hmm. i wanted to teach myself god damn it and i <laughs> wanted michael's method and i just <laughs> wanted to learn how to do it that way yeah but that's also kind of helped, I guess, not influence me by whoever's, you know, videos or something I was watching. Everything's and not even based off of Michael anymore. There's been several discs I've showed him where he's just like, how the hell did you do that? How did you figure that out? And almost every time I'm like, oh, I just use a sponge. <laughs> if you were to start disc dyeing fresh today, is there anything that you would do differently? Yeah, but if I knew then what I know now, I, I wouldn't have dealt with hand cutting things. Hand cutting things is for the birds. Yes. I hated it. I did a couple of halfway decent ones. I got so frustrated. I was working on one for the Dreaded X, spent like three hours cutting out the design, went to weed it, and I was like, oh, fuck, great. I didn't, I didn't cut all the way through. <laughs> I got so mad, and I had this like $75 gift card from Target sitting around. It was like a gift from work or something. And I was like, all right, let's see. Does Target have crickets? Oh shit, they do. And ordered it online again during COVID, went and picked it up and things just like blew up from there. Are there any disc dyers that inspired you? I know you mentioned oh, one. God, yeah, there's so many though. Uh, put you on the spot, name them all. I can't do that. I mean, I'm going to be like everybody else and be like Keith Lempa, Chris Tannis, Distine.com. Those guys have just, they've done so much and they've really, really, and, and Keith is just a fucking amazing human being. Yeah. I, I don't even know how many people are out there like messaging Keith and being amazed at how fast he gets back to you. And mm -hmm. he's just absolutely amazing. And he's an amazing dyer. He does crazy things with those like zoetropes and shit that I never would have like wanted to do. Like all the guys in like my group chat that I'm in, they're all amazing and they all have their very unique little, you know, things. I don't have like a favorite. Every, there's so many good people out there. And like everybody, again, yeah, the, the corn chat dies that I've done like different like swaps and everything with. Like Jeff Darrow with the, the cells, with Darrow J dies. Like 
um, Steve Baranowski, and Nowski dies with those really cool swirls and stuff, like, have very, you know, specific different kind of things going on. I can't pick a favorite, but oh, yeah. there's a lot of people that are integral to, you know, me doing what I do. Is there any specific uh, places or person that you've learned a new technique from or got more information from that helped you with your dying? I don't know. I don't know if this is necessarily to answer that question, but like there was when I was first getting started out before the TDD video and everything, I was just posting my pictures on Instagram and this dude, uh, Matthew Zottarelli, uh, send it custom disc dies on Instagram.com started messaging me and was just like, fucking hype man was just you're so amazing how do you do that and like just going crazy and he was just like such a a cool dude and then like he's like you should do one of these t titty videos and i was like what the hell is t titty like i didn't even know or anything and then like bobby curry hit me up and we planned doing the video and everything and like bobby is just he's such a cool dude mm -hmm. like he came down to my class at ledgestone so i got to like kind of hang out with him in person that nice. was kind of weird it felt weird and then the girls from we die you fly came and stalked me down there <laughs> fangirling over me as they like to say nice. love you guys um but yeah bobby being there and like bobby was just like really really supportive and like i didn't know that was gonna like turn into a thing i don't even know how many views are on that video or anything anymore but that kid just hyping me up so much and then like kind of went behind my back and was like hey bobby you should check this chick <laughs> out and then Bobby hit me up, and then every again everything just kind of went crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, interesting and amazing how things just work out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have expected any of this. Talk. I mean, well, everything's been a little weird since like the end of twenty nineteen, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and having something like this was definitely really, really important to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, now we boosted your ego. Let's bring it down. Fuck. Huh. Yeah. Your favorite fave. <laughs> to get to know you on more of a personal level. Oh, what is your favorite band or song? Oh, fuck, man. Don't even get me started on music. My favorite band in the entire world is Clutch. They're amazing. If you've never heard of them and you like just like good old feel good American rock and roll, you gotta check them out. Sounds pretty They clutch. are just <laughs> intensely amazing. It's been the same four guys since like the late 80s, early 90s, and they've mm -hmm. put out like 13 albums. Like every year they put out a new album, so I feel like they're never going away. They're absolutely amazing. But I, li I listen to a lot of just rock in general. Yeah. It, the Tool with the Tool disc, Rage Against the Machine, System of a Down, Corrosion of Conformity. I listen to a bunch of classic rock too. Yeah, you know, the music that we listen to, to now is like our parents in the 80s metal rock bands. And I've been seeing a lot of concert re concerts recently and I went to go see Korn and it's like, here's one of our oldies. I'm like, fuck, I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> but a lot of the music that I like come back to that like really puts me in that kind of just makes me feel good and nostalgic mm -hmm. is yeah the show i was listening to in high school like mud veins static oh. x mm. seven dust non-point that kind of old school stuff just gives me like a little happy flutter when i hear it because yeah. i think about being a happy careless teenager so not to be the old grumpy guy but i feel like i'm older than you well, by you the didn't, way you didn't have to say that <laughs> But I feel like the the 90s or the era that we grew up in had the best rock slash metal music. I wish I could have experienced more of the 90s music, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, my first, like, crush ever was Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Because yeah. he was a beautiful mm -hmm. man. And I was in, like, first grade. And, like, I loved Soundgarden. I got pissed off with the Audio Slave because it wasn't Rage. It wasn't mm -hmm. Soundgarden. It wasn't enough for me. I had a chance to see them, and I wish I would have. Like, Soundgarden was on my bucket list, and then after Chris Cornell passed away, like, yeah. that's the one that really kind of got to me. Like, there's a lot of people that died because mm -hmm. of drugs or, you know, anything else from the 90s era. 
But that one, like, literally made me cry. Just imagining that I'm never going to hear Chris Cornell singing a song again because mm-hmm. he had such a unique voice. Just, ugh. Yes. Goosebumps. Just goosebumps. Like LeJean from Seven Dust. Goosebumps. Yeah. I like a good voice. Have you ever been to Ozfest? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day when I was like 16, 17 years yep. old, I went by myself. It was a terrible idea <laughs> when I was like this pretty little 16-year-old girl prancing around in my little skirt and shit by myself. Yes, I went to Ozfest a couple times at Alpine Valley. And uh, speaking of artists and drugs and dying, I went to <laughs> Ozfest and Drowning Pool. Basically, I saw the last concert of Drowning Pool. Uh, uh, I got to see them at a uh, band camp in Madison right before he died. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just, yeah. yeah. I don't even know. Anyways, your favorite food? It's just... Say pizza. It's not pizza. With you with your weird pulling your toppings off your pizza shit. Yes. Shopping. I'm actually um, a really good cook, I have to say. Um, I guess my favorite genre of food then would be like Mexican food, Tex-Mex. I make up a lot of shit make hot sauce yeah, I, brought, gonna, I brought you some hot sauce i'd love to hear your view it's amazing yeah i was gonna say it. that was awesome that you yeah. made your own hot sauce yeah i like just uh i don't have like just one favorite thing and i yeah i cook a lot i don't know how i have time for all this shit oh yeah i'm single and i don't have children yeah well <laughs> <laughs> all that money you must be drowning in. oh god no i live in madison <laughs> it is not cheap there <laughs> yeah uh well so what do you use to wash all that food down? What is your favorite beverage? I'm, I'm actually more of a, a PBR drinker, but after you're making fun of it being like hipster, and I'm not a hipster at all, I was like, I'll bring some fancy spotted cow. All these people that can't get it out of state that have had it before are all like salivating and angry at me. Yeah, I begin Wisconsin. We have a lot of uh, beer to choose from. So you don't have kids and you're drowning in money what other hobbies do you have disc golf yeah okay playing disc golf um and cooking i spend a lot of time cooking i really like just like i'm one of those person that when i grocery shop i'll just go scope out the meat department buy whatever's on sale and then i have a vacuum sealer at home so i just like divvy it out like i have a roommate Mm -hmm. because i'm not drowning in money (laughs) i need a roommate and he doesn't cook he only eats like quick trip food constantly and somehow he's skinny as fuck i prep food a lot if i'm if i'm not working on a disc i need to like kind of keep myself busy i do have days where i just throw a movie on and just watch something Mm -hmm. but otherwise i'll like yeah just do some like meal prep and then freeze a bunch of stuff it gives me great gratification to just be like i want a euro and just go grab shit out of the freezer and ta-da kind of random stuff i really need to meal prep more because it's annoying to uh cook all the time yes you do like a giant ass pot of chili yeah. or something and then divvy it out and ta-da. do you have an instapot no hmm I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know. I have like mandolins and all these fancy choppers and shit, but mm-hmm. I'm very like tactile. And I, again, like I have very bad like anxiety mm-hmm. and there's a lot of stuff I do just kind of like zone out or whatever. And like just meh, 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 chopping up some onions or something like, no, there's no like beauty in that. I love just having my, my nice chef's knife and mm. dicing everything up really fine. You know, when I make like a chili, or like salsa or something, I'll put a, I'll watch like a movie and a half because it takes that long to chop everything up, but it's really satisfying to me. Yeah, no, I hate doing that, so if you ever want to chop my onions. No, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm not coming all the way out here for that. Yeah. So you live in Madison, and there's uh, quite a few courses by you. Yeah. Kind of on that topic, what, uh, if you had to pick three discs for the rest of your life to play any course... What would those three discs be? My Miss Argentina Sapphire is very special to me. Especially because of that jerk that's using my picture around on Facebook saying, Die is fate. It's all a scam. And I've asked him repeatedly to stop using the picture of my disc. Mm. And yet, you know, fuck that guy. Uh, my katana, that my only ace is with an old pro katana that... That, that was one of my only discs I threw for a long time that um, 
and if anybody I know watches this, like back in the day, I used to just only do my approaches and putts with that katana. I'm really good at putting with that katana. <laughs> a tie between my truth and my claymore, because hmm. both of those do some magic shit sometimes. Uh, speaking of truth, I think, yeah, I did buy that Native American die that you did, mm-hmm. the truth, which uh, I really love that. Are you, you said you were going to try that again. Are you ever going to do something? God, similar? that was one of the first ones I did. Yeah? Yeah, probably. I have stockpiled so much shit, and just, again, with the way my brain works, I actually did, like, contact sheets of all of these stencils that I've, like, downloaded over the years. Mm-hmm. And then bound them together. So I just have my own little catalogs of everything that I've collected. And I'll sit and flip through the pages until something, you know, really gets the excitement about it, about actually, you know, working on it. So I feel like you're a very physical and tactile person because you have a physical calendar, I'm assuming, and you printed out your stencil contact sheets. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a thing called a computer. I I am very analog. You should see how many little notebooks I have in my purse that I just carry around a little notebook to jot a, a mm. note down rather than finding the app on my phone and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Do you ever sketch anything out for a stencil or ideas? Nope. No. I am not a good artist. Okay. Well, that's what computers are I've for. I've been... No. No. Yeah. I'm not... Uh, actually, uh, shit. Who was just talking about that pencil thing? Was that Ginger... Was that Bill that was talking about the um, iPad yes. pencil that reacts to pressure in the yes. chat the other day? Yeah. Um, Ginger Vitus. Yeah, no. Uh, Bill Hammond. Um, I would love trying something like that sometime. The way that it like reacts to the pressure and you can draw like mm-hmm. with a pencil or a pen kind of thing. Like I used to have the Wacom tablets back in the day and it just... That's so awkward and it doesn't feel natural. I never got anything good out of that. No, I feel like it's... It wasn't exactly the same, and it felt disconnected, if that makes any sense. Yes, very much so. Especially yeah. if you had to do the clicky thing in order to, you know, change whatever. And the way that he was saying that he just, you know, you find an image and kind of trace it more yeah. with that little pencil. I would be interested in trying that at some point. But I'll have to let you try out my iPad at Apple Pencil. But even, it's still, I'm no artist by any mean, and I can cobble stuff together, but it's still pretty difficult to trace yeah. something to... Yeah, I don't like that. I, I'm more of a... I, I don't like using just like, oh, bam, image trace and seeing what it comes up with. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time, again, with the Photoshop Illustrator thing, in Photoshop trying to clean it up yeah. and get the contrast good enough to where I think it'll make a good trace. Uh, and if I don't in Illustrator, I do uh, the PNG to SVG.com. I've tested stuff out just to see if it's better than what I came up with. I've just tested it out to see if it's... Even worth trying kind of Mm -hmm. thing kind of going back to the the stencil thing for the cricket do you use do you import vector files or do you import transparent pngs usually if i have to clean anything up or if i want to change anything i'm doing stuff in the svg i never really save anything as svgs i'm saving stuff as ais and eps's out of illustrator but then uh i'll export as a png yeah and if there's white involved where I need white to be involved instead of really figuring out the layering and Pathfinder and all that crap, then I just take that out in the Cricut software. I found that the transparent PNGs work best in the Cricut software. Uh, I've had a lot of weird things go on with SVGs where I brought, uh, even uh, my, where's my logo? Yeah. This, for some reason, it, It got saved as an SVG, and then I brought it in, and it filled in all of the holes of all the letters. And I'm like, no, that's no, that's not what I want. And as soon as I did a PNG, then it was fine. The other thing that I noticed is if the design is very complicated, it the software really chugs along. Yeah. Yeah. So like transparent PNGs, I don't notice any quality difference. I think. um, Well, and then usually I'm doing everything to size. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like if you, you know, just straight up download an SVG or something, it's literally like 40 inches by 40 inches and you only need it at like eight by eight kind of thing. Mm. But it's also, pardon me, paying attention, I think, to like the path points and stuff. Yeah. Like you would in Illustrator. When it's a PNG, it's rasterized and just that one flat thing instead of it looking at it as shapes with like an SVG or an EPS. Yeah. 
but that's just I might be making shit up. Am Probably. I talking out of my ass? Yeah, you are. Sounds like it makes sense. I'm pretty <laughs> good at that, I have to say. There's been a lot of times in my life where I feel like I'm talking out of my ass that I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure that's actually right. And then I prove myself right by looking it up. Hey. <laughs> You can say anything you want if you have confidence, and anybody will believe you. Oh, I don't have confidence. Oh, okay. there's a there's a camera pointed at me over just, there. Just ignore that giant thing, there. Ah, uh, great! This is best podcast. Isn't this ever. so much fun? Yes. And I'm glad it doesn't feel like I'm being interviewed. Yes, I. Mm, great. All right. Next question. Dream date. If you had to pick a pro disc golf player to play around with and hang out, who would that person be? What if it... I feel like this is so much easier for the dudes. They're just like, oh, Kristen, she's so hot. Like, I don't I don't really think any of them are really that hot. As far as a date and being all like, mm. Well, but I, Simon Lazard, I would love to hang out with him. He just seems like a cool fucking dude. He's just like a nerd who loves cats and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, he just seems like... So much fun. But Simon just seems like a very Midwestern nice. Doesn't he seem like, you know, mm-hmm. the whole Germany and Wisconsin thing, similar yeah. climates, but he just seems like a Midwest nice kind of guy. Yeah. What what pro players have you met? Uh, Barsby, Nico, Barrett, uh, Haley, King. I would have to like look at a list now. I've, I, uh, Garrett Greasy. I don't really watch. Uh, I I watch the the you know pro tours and stuff once in a while kind of thing, but it's mm-hmm. just it's just not my favorite thing to just like. I don't know. I'm not a very competitive person. I barely even like doing tournaments and stuff. I'll do like the fun ones. Again, with the dreaded X that I keep bringing up. It was like all day, every day, Joe Mez, and I'm like, dude, I can't fucking do this. Like, can, can we please turn it off? And I started hearing, you know, I'm jumping every time I hear chains, and like, I'm hearing chains in my sleep. His fucking ringtone on his phone with chains banging. And I'm like, yeah, it got to be a bit much. Right on. So, yeah. All right. Not like, ooh, pro disc golfers. It's yeah. more like, hey, bro, how's it going? Yeah. Where can people find you at? On Instagram at this is how I die, all one word. Uh, on Facebook, uh, this is how I die. I have a business page, um, and this is how I die. Discs at gmail dot com for any uh, custom requests. I have a long list right now. I'm not trying to. Once it's winter, I'm fine with working on a bunch of shit. But right now, I want to enjoy the last of you yeah. know, our summer before fall just immediately turns into winter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. Do you plan on having or creating any courses on Disc Golf Dyer's Guild at some point in time? I'm trying to force you to do this. Yeah, you're trying to force me to (laughs) unveil my secret, and I'm just going to... Nope. Yeah, well... There's lots of other stuff, though. Yeah. Literally, like, yeah. Even something just with kind of like my T-Diddy video, where it's just using different tools for different textures kind of thing, but... Mm -hmm. I found that like a lot of people are just like, yep, tried the detergent, didn't want to do it. And it's like watercolor painting to me, Mm. being able to see through and see the layers to be able to do all kinds of the details of doing different textures and stuff. So another thing that we're going to be doing on this podcast is every dyer, if they want to do a raffle and I, you're going to participate in that, right? Yeah. Okay, you sound very confident. Yes, I am. So uh, look out for that on the website. Uh, 100% of the proceeds go to the dyer. So support. That's me. Yeah, that is you. So support this uh, starving artist. <laughs> St- starving artist. Uh, the raffle will go live on the launch of this podcast and will be live for two weeks. And you'll see whatever the disc is on the website because I don't know if It's going to be some cool Halloween type shit because it's that time of year. Yes. Yes, it is. Some Tim Burton stuff. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that concludes the podcast. Uh, thank you for being on. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And we're done. See, that wasn't bad.